Hi guys, it's Paul from Oz Animate, and today we're going to take a look at Storyboarder from Wonder Unit, a fantastic storyboarding tool. Let's jump right in. Okay, here we are in Storyboarder, and straight away I can notice a beautiful interface. It's very simple, looks great. Um, I've got my right hand side here with all of my panels actions, dialogues and notes that I can put in. On the top here we've got our drawing tools and all these tools are made specifically for storyboarding. So for example this first tool here, the light pencil, um, allows you to basically create a light underlying sketch, right? So you can create your basic sketch almost like wireframe. Um, which is really good when you're storyboarding quickly and you want to get very fast sort of drawings happening um, but you're not sure about the details just yet you just want to have the basic forms and elements for when you then go and clean that up so once I've got this reference sketch I can use the pencil tool and add a bit more detail or if I'm feeling even more confident I can go and use the ink tool up here and that's a nice tapering line again all these drawing tools are really intuitive and great tools to use right so just working on my Clean up. Okay, once I've got my cleanup all done, I can actually go on the right hand side and turn off that reference layer. So you can see that light pencil disappear and I can change that opacity as I go. So that's really handy. All these little options are beautiful. The next one is your tone. So again, I don't have to create a new layer for this. This is just all working on the same layer and I can quickly add some shadow, the shortcuts for increasing the brush size is the same as Photoshop, your square brackets. So I can quickly fill in some shadows, um, tone to make the character pop from the background. Um, the next tool is your notes tool. So straight away, I can add some arrows. Maybe this guy is turning his head. Okay, maybe a color for some action and then a green color for some camera. Maybe I have a zoom in onto his face. Okay, but the beauty of this is that all these layers exist, even though you don't see them here, they exist um, as layers within Photoshop because this tool works beautifully with Photoshop. You can see up here I've got a Photoshop button. If I click on that, it will open my sketch in Photoshop straight away. Flashes into Photoshop and in Photoshop, I've got all of my layers. So I've got my notes, so my little notes that I've just drawn are here. I've got my main artwork and my reference layer. So that light pencil again is showing up here. So that allows me to have all of the control that I may have in Photoshop. So I can use lasso tools, things that aren't quite there yet in Storyboarder, you can do it in Photoshop. And if you've got custom brushes, um, I know I've got a whole bunch here. I can go into my favorites. I can grab a nice textured brush and you know, if I get the right color, I can quickly keep working within Photoshop. And once I want to switch back the storyboarder, all I have to do is just command S, save my drawing, switch back to storyboarder, and there you go, it's all updated. Okay, here we are in a more finished board. As you can see, I've got a couple of shots down here in the timeline, and I can quickly add a new panel or a new shot by pressing N, and very quickly also I can move that around, reorder it. Um, really easy to, to navigate and work this way. Um, what's also nice with this storyboarder is that you have an option to add duration to your panels. So if you want to turn this storyboard into an animatic, then you can do that up here, basically set the time that you want for each panel. 
So for example, here I have 1000. So you have two options, either milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds is one second, or you can work in frames. 24 frames is one second. So we're working at 24 here in this, um, in this app. So that's a really good workflow. Basically what I would do is export this as a PDF first. You have that option. Also within Storyboarder, you can export as a PDF, get approved on that um, static sort of um, storyboard first. And then if you want, you can also then export as a GIF. So that will give you basically, based on your durations for each panel here, you'll have a little GIF and that exports straight away. So let me quickly show you what that looks like. So here's my GIF animatic, which I can send via Slack or via email. It's very light, um, very quick and easy to, to get a rough idea of what the finished thing will look like. So that's um, something for your director, for your client. You can see also I've got the captions for what the VO is saying. So that's um, also super, super handy um, to do. Once that's approved, you also have an option within Storyboarder to export for your Final Cut and or Premiere. So exporting that, let's do that quickly. Gives you a folder where you have all of your PNGs and you also have an XML file. So basically once you import that within Premiere, you can have all of your animatic timing ready to go. So you don't have to do any editing it's all ready for you, which allows you then to quickly edit um, your timing, just fine tuning it, putting some audio and exporting a more finished animatic for your piece. So really, um, really powerful features in Storyboarder. Sometimes the worst possible place for getting ideas or inspiration is in front of a computer. That's why a lot of storyboard artists like to draw on paper, sketchbooks, or whiteboards, anything that's outside of the digital space. Luckily, Storyboarder has a fantastic feature that allows us to do just that. All you have to do is go into the file menu and print a Storyboarder worksheet. You have control over how many rows and columns you wanna print out. I'll choose three by three and send this to print. Once I'm back in the studio, I can take a picture of each worksheet with my phone, go back into Storyboarder, go to File, and Import Worksheets. I can then set my corners. And Storyboarder will import each panel in the app and in sequence. This is great for rough storyboards. And remember that reference layer, the light layer? Those panels will go directly on that layer. So I can then go and grab my drawing tools and start refining my sketches. So here's something really interesting. If you're not the best drawer or you need some inspiration for your shots, you have a shot generator, which allows you to create all sorts of shots to get you going. You can do an entire storyboard just using that panel by itself. Uh, so you basically have options as to what type of shot you want to use from an extreme close up all the way to a long shot. You can change where you want your subject to be in the first third, the last third. Um, you even have options for the field of view of your camera. So if you want a wide camera, you can go ultra wide. You have, let's get a bit closer. Let's choose a medium shot with an ultra wide. That looks pretty cool. Um, you also have options for what kind of light you want in the scene. If it's backlit, if it's front lit, um, if it's a more of a dim scene, you can have even choice of room size. It's really quite amazing. Um, all sorts of poses that will get you going. Um, so let's put him maybe on a skateboard. There you go. Um, once you have that, you can go to your shot. You can turn on your perspective grid. So it gives you an idea of 
what the perspective is going to look like. And remember that I'm going to click on it first, I think. Yep, here we go. So you double click on that. Um, remember that reference layer opacity you had from before with the light pencil, that also applies to the shot generator. So I can dim this, turn it on and off, and I basically have a template, right? I can start to draw my character on top of it if I need some reference. Um, you can change the model to a male, female, box model is not a, an option, double click on that to update. But that perspective grid really comes in handy, um, you know, if you, if you, you want to have some interesting angles to your shots, that's what I used for some of these. You can see I've got my perspective grid turned on and I've based my sketch around that grid. It gives me really um, dramatic, you know, interesting angles. So that's something really, um, really interesting I've never seen before in other other programs and really opens new doors, especially if you use the random option, right? You can randomize all of these options and give you a really interesting starting point, you know, something that you maybe not, you wouldn't think of. So really, really interesting stuff. All right, guys, thank you so much for checking out our review of Storyboarder. I'd like to thank Wonder Unit for putting this wonderful tool out and into the community. Please go and support them, give them a review, and download the app via their website. I'll put the link in the show notes. And once again, I'm Paul from Oz Animate, and I'll catch you later. Cheers.